Welcome to another episode of Salvation Solutions. I am Aviance. I am Aramis. And I am Pastor Deke. So today, um, we are going to jump actually right into our topic. So today's topic is about anxiety. Mm. So Papa D, why don't you let us um, let us in on some scriptures on what it says about anxiety or worry? Yeah, um, as as we've always discussed, like salvation is the solution, mm-hmm. and we have a we have a solution for everything. The Bible has an answer for everything. Uh, the scripture says that God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness, and that means how to live a godly life within the structure or the framework of a society that we have today. And, um, and anxiety is something that, that is built into the world system. It's to cause anxiety. And it's something that, that we, we have to deal with. And, and Jesus knew it and God knew it. And um, Jesus, actually, Jesus actually, I don't know if I would call it anxiety, but the pressure of, of fulfilling the will of God caused him to even have to fight off the thoughts um, of, of anxiety or fear um, when he was in the garden and he was thinking about being separated from his father uh, and he, he, the Bible says his sweat was as great drops of blood and the Bible says he being in agony so it describes, it describes what he was going through as an agony, he being in an agony and in the um, I was sent a I was sent a, um, a Facebook post uh, this past week, and it was a post that was expressing this, this blogger's plight overcoming anxiety. And she went into the details of what anxiety will cause one to live like or, or experience the things that it will cause them to experience. Everything from restless nights to sleepless nights to overthinking to worrying to procrastinating to fear to... Um, you know, be not being overly nice, overthink just a whole litany of things that as I was reading, I'm like, this is this is good. This is right on. This is to the point. This is very practical. It's where a lot of people live. And as I'm going through it, every time I deal with something, like she she talked about anxiety, anxiety, one of one of the things that has to do with anxiety is is um is what did she say? Oh, it's it's waking up tired even though your day just started. You know, as she said, anxiety is, is, anxiety is restless nights of sleep as you toss and turn, your brain never shutting off. She talked about anxiety being, um, being something where you, where, you, where, you, where you sleep, but you wake up tired, right? And the Bible, the Bible talks about he gives his beloved sleep. He gives us rest. So every, everything she pretty much listed, the Bible has the solution for, right? Salvation is the solution to and so when we deal with any of the perils of poverty or the perils of death, um, we, have to, we have to look at our salvation. And so uh, one of the first scriptures that came to mind as she was talking about the anxiety of, you know, life and, and is, is Matthew's, Matthew's gospel, the sixth chapter, verse 30, starting at verse 31. Um, I'll just read it. And, you know, when you, when you see it, when you see it, it's like, you know, okay, Jesus was going through the kingdom, starting started actually in, in verse, in chapter 5, 6, and 7. He really, he really uh, outlays the, um, the life or kingdom living, or what does life look like in his government and under his order. And he got into the sixth chapter, and he was talking about, um, you know, things that, people worry about and in verse in verse 25 he starts off by talking about therefore I say unto you take no thought for your life uh, what you shall eat or what you shall drink for your body or what you shall put on is not life more than meat and the body more than raiment then he goes into how the fowl of the air are taken care of and how your father feedeth them are you not better than them um, then he talks about which of you can add one by taking thought. The, the word taking thought means to be worrisome or to be, an, to be anxious about, right? And he says, uh, why take thought for those things? And he talks about Solomon and all his glory being clothed. And really, this, this is a, um, a characterization of what they call the, uh, uh, the um, 
Mas Maslow's, if I'm saying that's right, hierarchy of needs. What you gonna eat, what you gonna wear, what you gonna, what you gonna drink, how you gonna sleep. Those things, like man needs those things to live life. Mm -hmm. And Jesus basically saying, don't, don't, don't take no thought. Don't become worrisome. Don't become anxious. Don't become overly um, uh, excited about these things. He says, for after these things do us, the Gentiles seek. You know, and what he was alluding to was there is there is there is a specific thing in a specific way God would have you to have these needs met. And then he revealed to them that you seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Now, that that phrase or that scripture is packed with so much information. And we have to really we need more than the little 45 minutes we have to unpack that particular scripture. Because everything that goes into seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness that will enable all these things to be added unto you deals with everything from, from, from new birth and your, and your cry for the word of God to you being mature enough and perfected in the things that God has for you so that you can possess the promises of God. So there's a, there's a whole life or range of things that go in there. It's not just if I read my Bible, then I ain't got to worry about these things you know, which most people portray it to be as. It's not just that. But no, it's actually you embracing everything about the life that God has called you to live. And as you embrace everything about the life that God has called you to live, then all these things will be added unto you. Example would be, the Bible says in Proverbs 10, verse 22, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and addeth no anxiety, no sorrow to your life. Mm -hmm. Right? So embodied in seeking first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness is that, that truth. Is that law of the blessing. The blessing has an assignment to make you rich and to eliminate anxiety. You won't have to worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what you're going to wear, as long as you abide and follow the leadership of the blessing or the benediction or the prophetic instruction or the prophetic word that's spoken over your life or the preceding word that you live by. So that's all in that scripture. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. The bottom line to the solution to the anxiety that people deal with is seeking first the kingdom of God, the comprehensive understanding of that. Not the simple, you know, if I read my Bible for, you know, three times a week and, you know, I pay my tithes, then I ain't got to worry about nothing. No, we, we found out that's not working. Because you get more folks in the church under, uh, under stress and anxiety. Listen, I heard the most incredible, I heard the most incredible statistic today. I, I, I don't know where these folks get this stuff from. But they, 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 they get it. Wait, but is this a real survey? Or is this, this is a real that, survey. Okay. This is a real survey. The man said this. He said that, that, that studies show the highest stress-filled occupations, the most anxiety-filled occupations in America, the first one, the first one was the first one was, uh, what was the first one? Man, the first one was, well, I know one of them was <laughs> surgeon. One of them was a plastic surgeon. That okay, was the first I, one, yeah, was a yeah, plastic yeah, surgeon. That's a lot of that. pressure. Yeah, right? That, yeah. that might have been the first one. The second one was, oh, my God, I can't remember the second one. The first one was a plastic surgeon. The second was, um, it was right there. It was right there. The second was, first one was a plastic surgeon. The second one was something. But the third one <laughs> what <is> was something. <laughs> I, can't, I can't remember. <laughs> I just want to get to the third one anyway. <laughs> the third one was preaching. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Like, what's, God didn't intend for your preaching to be stressful? Well, could that be because people aren't preaching what they're living? No, it's because they're in the flesh is what it is. I don't know where they get that from. I thought and, it was and embrace it. I, well, no, ain't no truth. Listen, if, you, if you're stressed out by preaching, then you're in the flesh. <laughs> you ain't in the spirit. You ain't in the spirit. Well, Everything about our salvation is rest. Is you, our, the Bible says our labor is to enter into the rest. Yeah. In Hebrews, everything we do, we should do from the position of rest. If you're not doing it from the position of rest, you're in the flesh. Okay, but then there, there's this thought, right? Because we have to work out our own salvation. But mm -hmm. we also have to co-labor with God with certain promises or destinies that's on our life. That It does require work which could be stressful at times. 
Why are you looking if you, at me? <laughs> <laughs> if you if you stressing out, you in the flesh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right, you're right. Yeah, he's looking at me. <laughs> we supposed to co-labor. <laughs> we supposed to co-labor and do all that stuff. Bobby but D. listen, hold it, hold it. Take my yoke upon you. Co-labor with me. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Ain't no stress in that. I get what you're saying, babe. I get what you're saying. Are you sure? You look at me like sure. I'm going to go off the street. Like, I'm saying, I, I'm saying. When you start nah. talking like that. Like, Bobby D ain't been raising me for years. Yeah, I'm saying. I'm like, right. When you think about that, though, it's like, wait a minute. Okay, I get it. You right on. Call labor. But ain't no stress in it. If I'm stressing, I'm, I'm missing it somewhere. Mm. Salvation and stress, that's, that's they're diametrically opposed. Salvation and stress. Okay, but how how about this? Maybe maybe things are translated as stress because when we start thinking about destinies and, and callings, we are people who who think about the the practicality, our 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 scheduling, what all of that goes into. All of all of that thinking can seem stressful because you're constantly thinking about how, I li- how is going to work out. I like that out. better. I like the way you worded oh. that. <laughs> That's better, baby. Praise God. I don't got saved again. <laughs> yeah. It, it, that, 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 don't mean, that don't mean stress don't try to come on your life. That don't mean stress don't try to rise up and attack me. That don't mean that. I'm not saying that that's not the case. Okay. That's why the Bible says, that's why he said, take no thought saying. We take a thought, we take possession of thoughts by saying them. Every thought that comes through your mind don't mean it's from you. That's true. The Bible says the thoughts of the righteous are only right. Anything, any thought that comes to my mind that's not in line with righteousness, that ain't my thought. That's from the flesh. And when we say flesh, we're not talking about the, right. the, the physical. We're talking about the unrenewed darkness components of the soul. That's, that the Bible refers to that as, as, as flesh. That ain't, that ain't from me. So I, I won't take it. I won't accept it. I won't accept it. I won't, I won't repeat it. I won't say it. You're not supposed to say every thought that comes to your mind. That ain't from you. That's a fact. That's from the, if it's from the flesh, then leave it, leave it in the flesh. Don't take it. Don't possess it. That's why he says, take no thought saying. What shall I eat? Don't, no, don't say that. Don't say that. What you should be saying is, my heavenly father knows that I have need of these things, and that's what I'm going to say. He is my Jehovah Jireh. My Lord shall supply my need. He's going to lead me and guide me into the realities of being able to possess those things that I need for my life.